Hello students, in this video we'll discuss linear equations in high dimensional spaces. So we're going to discuss linear equations in high dimensions. Okay, so let's start with low dimensions first, right? And so here's the idea. So let's start with something we're very comfortable with. The idea we're very comfortable with is just equations that look like this. Look like ax plus by is equal to c. This is something we learn about in algebra. These are just lines. The locus of point satisfy these things are just lines in, I'm going to say lines in two-dimensional Euclidean space. So remember that when we plot lines, we plot a x plus by is equal to c. We know like slope and intercept forms of these things. We always plot them on the x, y axis. That's of course two-dimensional space. I have an x axis, I have a y axis, and an x axis, two dimensions. Then we talk about multivariable calculus. We go to these equations over here. These are our linear equations. These are planes now. These are the equations of planes that we learn about in multivariable calculus. So these are planes. And these planes reside in three-dimensional space. Okay, But that's sort of where our intuitive geometric ideas start to fail beyond three-dimensional space. But we can still algebraically define what a linear equation is in n-dimensional space. So let's do that. So now we can extend these ideas, and we'll get equations that look like this. I'm going to have to, I can't use the letters A, B, C, D anymore, so I have to start to use enumerate them with indices. So I'm going to say A1, X1, plus A2, X2, plus all the way down to A, N, X, N is equal to some constant C is a hyperplane. This is called a hyperplane. And let's think about where it would reside. So over here we had x and y, that was in R2. We had x, y, and z, those were my variables, that was R3. And so let's see what we have here. I have variables x1, x2, xn. So this is a hyperplane, hyperplane in Rn, right? Now let's think about the dimension of these things over here. So let's label the dimensions of these things. The dimension of a line, so a line is a one-dimensional thing. So I'm going to say the dimension of this line over here is equal to 1. A plane is a two-dimensional thing, so the dimension over here is equal to 2. And it looks like the dimension is always one less than the space in which it resides for these linear equations. So this is an, an n-dimensional space. This plane, which resides in n-dimensional space, or hyperplane, you can keep calling it a plane if you wish, this hyperplane, which resides in n-dimensional space, has dimension n minus 1. So the dimension of this is equal to n minus 1. Now there are some natural equations. So these, all these equations are called linear. So this is a linear equation. This over here is a linear equation. in n-dimensional space. Great. Now, the natural questions that arise with these things are the following. So here's our first question, question one. Geometrically, we should put that in quotation marks because what's geometry in four-dimensional space or five-dimensional space? Geometrically, what do these things look like? Now, what we're going to think about is we're going to think about that usually in this course in the context of projections onto smaller dimensional subspaces or things of that nature. And question two is, um, how can we find points on these surfaces? That's equivalent to what? This question over here is equivalent to, can we find solutions to the equations? Okay, And that's actually fairly simple to do, right? So in other words, what we could do is I could say, okay, well, what would a solution, what would it mean to be a solution of this? So we say that S1, S2, Sn is a solution of, let's call this equation over here star, right? Of star. If what? If a1 s1 plus a2 s2 plus an sn 
is equal to what? Is equal to C. In other words, when you plug it into the equation, you actually get the right value, right? So in other words, it just satisfies the equation. Excellent. Now let's do sort of a more complex example, and that's the question when, what happens when I have one or, or two or more of these equations, and I ask, are there solutions to that system of equations, right? So that's the principal, one of our principal questions over here. So question, given two or more linear equations, can we find a point, a solution? Then namely a point on both. And is that solution unique? And so let me show you an example of this that we're going to sort of foreshadow what we're going to be doing. If I look at this system of equations over here, if I look at x plus y minus z is equal to 2, and then 2x plus 3y plus z is equal to 1, what I have here is I have two planes, right? So these are two planes in three-dimensional space. Now we can imagine, we see how I solve these things in Calc 3 very easily, but without thinking of Calc 3, what I have over here is I have two planes. Now what could happen with two planes? Two planes can be parallel to each other, which in case there'd be no way that you could be on both of those planes simultaneously. They could intersect in a line, right? And so they could, it's possible they could intersect in a line, right? So I could have a parallel behavior like this, and there's no solutions, or they could potentially intersect in a line, right? So let's see what the situation is over here, right? And so what we're going to do, and so I'm going to manipulate these equations in this class in a way that we look like this. I'm going to put this into a matrix. I'm going to store the coefficients. My coefficients here are a1, a2, a n, so those a, j, so the a, j are called the coefficients. Okay? I'll store my coefficients over here, 1, 1, negative 1, and I'm going to put a dot for the dashed line for the other side of the equation, 2, and then 2, and then 3, and then 1, and then at 1. And then what the first thing I'm going to do over here is I'm going to start to do row operations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do negative 2 row 1 plus row 2, okay? And if I do that, what will we get? If I do that first operation, what we're going to see is this. We're going to see the first row is not changed, like that. But now with this, the second row going to place, so that will turn into a negative 1 plus 2, that's going to turn into a 0. That's going to be a negative 2 plus a 3, that's going to be a positive 1. And then a, then a, neg then a negative, uh, negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2, that's going to turn into a 3. And then that's going to be a negative 4 over here, so I have a negative 4 plus 1, that's going to be a negative 3. Okay, great. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second row, And this is, I'm replacing row two with this thing over here. Now I'm going to replace row one with what? I'm going to replace row one with negative row two plus row one. That's what I'm going to replace row one with. And then what will that become? That's going to become a what? So the second row is now going to stay the same. This process we'll see in further videos is called putting the matrix into reduced row echelon form. Then I have a negative three over here. Okay, great. And then so if I do negative 2, 0, plus 1, that's, that 1 stays put, okay? Then I have a negative 1 plus a 1, that gives me a 0. Then I have a negative 3 plus a negative 1, that's a negative 4. And then I have a negative 3, so I have a negative negative 3 plus 2, that's going to be a what? So negative 3 plus 2, negative negative 3 plus 2 is going to be a 5, okay? Now, what does this matrix tell me? I've sort of simplified my system. It tells me that this is my first variable over here. It tells me that x minus 4z is equal to 5, and y plus 3z is equal to negative 3, okay? So if we let, now we say that z over here is a free variable, so z is called free in this instance, so z is free, and if I tell you that z is equal to t, for example, so if we set z to be equal to t, so if z is equal to t, then what does that tell me? That tells me that x is going to be equal to what? x is going to be equal to 4t, which is z, plus 5, and y is going to be equal to what? y is going to be equal to negative 3t minus 3, right? And now we can check to see if this works over here, because if we do x plus y, so x plus y is going to give me what? Give me a t, and then a 2 over here, and then a minus z, and minus z, so that's going to give me just a 2. So the first equation is satisfied. If we do 2 times x, that's going to be an 8t. Then if I do 3 times y, that's going to be a 9t, so that's a negative t, plus z is going to 
kill the t, right? And then let's look at the constant coefficient over here. So I have a 2x, so it's going to be a 10, and then a negative 9, that's a 1, and then no constant over here, so it's going to be equal to 1. So in other words, for any t, this will solve as a solution for any t. For any value of t. And if for those of you who have seen multivariable calculus, you'll see that this exactly is the equation. This is the parametric equation of a line. So this, these, these values, x being 4t plus 5, y being negative 3t, negative 3t minus 3, and z being equal to t, is a line that goes through point 5, negative 3, 0, and whose bearing is going to be the vector 4, negative 3, 1. And we'll, we'll sort of flush that idea out in future videos. Thank you very much.